This is Sylph Radio, a Pokemon-centered podcast. Each episode of this podcast, we look at a different episode. A different episode, no. That's a lot of other podcasts. That's not what we do. Each episode of this podcast, we look at a different aspect of the Pokemon universe. It could be a Pokemon, as is the case today. Could be a character. Could be a game. Could be an episode. Could be a movie. Could be a town. Could be um, just a general concept involved with Pokemon. Could be an item. There's a million and one examples of what it could be. Today we're looking at a Pokemon, and uh, joining me again, I'm, I'm Nathan K. by the way, and this is... Jeremy Vine. Formerly Jeremy Davis. Catch up. If you didn't listen to the last episode, eh, you don't necessarily have to go back and listen, but this is kind of a part two. You don't have to go back at all. We're talking about a totally different Pokemon. Last week, we talked about the Sapphire exclusive Ludicolo, and this week we're talking its Ruby exclusive counterpart, Shiftry, and the Shiftry family. One of my very favorites from Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah, really cool Pokemon. We're going to take a look at it. We're probably going to joke around a little bit, and we're going to really give it the uh, consideration a uh, couple, you know, bio- bio- biology field researchers. I-, I don't know what I'm trying to say. What-, what am I trying to say here, Jeremy? Ecologists? Yeah, a couple, like, budding biologists and ecologists and stuff would would out in the field researching this who are not 10 years old like maybe if professor oak sent adults to or, or you know moved his own ass <laughs> or went out himself i get the feeling he did but now he's retired i get the feeling he never did and he's just and this now, creepy old man who uses child labor he's been in pallet town for 50 years telling people that he used to he, i used to back in when i was young yeah yeah totally <laughs> So before we get into this Pokemon and its mythological influences... And its adorable little masky face. First, let's uh, banter a little bit. Um, You know, since February, a new thing has been happening. This is my favorite time, Jeremy. You know, it's it, I really love Christmas time. It's great. But this time comes around less often than Christmas, which makes it a little more special. Summertime? No. <laughs> I know this is Syracuse, but... No, we always get a summer. You still get summer once a year. This maybe time period, to me, when they are slowly but surely revealing Pokemon and building up, revealing little bits and pieces about the upcoming game and new region and new Pokedex, is, to me, more fun than when the games are out and playing the games. It's to see, oh my god, they revealed a new Pokemon today. Like, oh man, that's so cool. Oh, I like this one. This one's kind of dumb. But this <laughs> one's super cool. Like is so fun and oh i can't wait to see which what the starters evolve and do so i can know which one i want and oh like i love it i love it i'm loving it and now it's really ramping up and we're getting new pokemon every few weeks and that's it's really awesome cool. i think it's because koro koro comes out monthly that's the magazine in japan in which they reveal the new pokemon and it'll usually leak a couple days before it comes out in japan once it hits like once distributors get it or whatever you know yeah so New Pokemon are being revealed, and I'm curious what you think of them. Is, do you have an overall? Like, what you think of them overall? Overall, I think that some of them are very creative. Uh, some of them are, you can tell, like, mentally creative, but the execution is a little lacking. Yeah. Like, I love, for instance, their Pokedex entries, but then I'll look at their artwork, and it'll be like, okay. Uh, some of them, it seems like there's a few that are a lot more just like an animal. Like, yeah. if you look at it, it just looks like an animal. But there's always been them. And it seems like there's some that are way too simplistic in design. And then again, there's always been them. Diglett, Dugtrio, Voltorb, Electrode, like Magnemite. But Diglett, Diglett carries on an old tradition. I know. Then we could figure out some of these too. But some of them, I don't know. Some of them look a little too simplistic for my tastes. Agreed. No, it's agreed. Some of them are great. And a few of them are just like, oh, I don't care. Some of them are just like, didn't you already do this Pokemon in gold and silver? <laughs> like, I swear you already did this Pokemon before. Yes, but now it's a new color and it has a spring coming out of its ass. <laughs> Hooray. No, no, that would be Meryl. Oh, All right. fuck. That was in gold and silver too, wasn't it? Guys, cancel Meryl for the next game. Call it Pika Blue or something. Yeah. Okay, boss. So the starters, what do you think of the three starters? I like the three starters. I don't like the seal. I don't like Poplio, the little blue that, seal. Yeah, that's the one that I was going to mention as the blue-headed stepchild. We need another seal? It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's not even that. It's, it 
harkens back to a real dark time for real life animal stuff and i kind of find it in poor taste like the circus and stuff it it literally is like a russian circus seal pup yeah which is terrible it even has like little ball nose and a little collar ruffle and it looks like it should evolve into what uh oshawa evolved into it's weird or like a sad horribly abused little seal poor thing like I, as it evolves it gets more scars and I'm, eventually it just it's dead <laughs> you just dead horribly abused circus animal seal go you always club your seal yeah yeah uh i am absolutely in love with litten i like litten and i like rowlet but litten i'm i fucking love litten and i Oh, I hope it's cool when it evolves. I really like Rowlet, and I can see potential for it. Yes, and I, I hope love Rowlet's that, cool when he evolves, too. I, I really hope they go for the grass flying thing, because that would be cool. What is grass, fly- grass flying? No, I understand that's grass flying in, like, the beginning part. You think it's going to lose flying? <sighs> become grass ground? Become a ground owl? It could be, which wouldn't be necessarily that bad, which is cool. You know, digging owls are a thing. They'd be like, it's a flying owl. Plan your strategy around that. Teach it a bunch of flying moves. Gotcha. Now it's ground type. You fucker. You fucker. You fucker. (laughs) Pokemon don't usually lose types. They do sometimes. Sometimes they switch. Eevee loses normal. Yeah. Can you think of another example? Um, I can't right now, but I know that it's there. But... I know sometimes they expand types, for instance. And and I get that grass and flying is kind of cool, right? But I would love to have, like, a grass and ground. Like, Torterra was pretty much the big starter that did that. And then you don't see it again. It's a really good, really strong combo. It takes care of a lot of the grass weaknesses. And the grass type takes care of a lot of the ground weaknesses. Rowlet, to me... Is totally whether or not I like Rowlet is a hundred percent depending on what it evolves into. Like Litten, I like Litten even if its evolution is ugly and stupid. I'll still like Litten. I'll still think Litten's a little cutie pie. But Rowlet, if Rowlet's evolution looks stupid, it's gonna make Rowlet look stupid to me. If Rowlet's evolution is cool, it's gonna make Rowlet look cute to me. Like, because otherwise it, it could be very lazy if it's not if it doesn't evolve into something cool. I mean, Rowlet, I have a I have a weakness for birds. I do, and I have a weakness particularly for owls and for corvidae. So I love crow, I love crows, and I love owls. And I love those not nocturnal owls types. Cool, but but this one could be a lot cooler. Yeah. Well, what do you think of the new Pidgey, the fucking woodpecker? Woodpecker is actually a really cool little design. I love and it. It kind of reminds me of like a cross between a hummingbird and a woodpecker. Yeah, it does now that you mention it. I cannot wait to see. It's got to evolve if it's the Pidgey, right? Yeah. So I cannot wait to see. what If it doesn't have three stages, that's just weird. Or no, Talonflame didn't have three. Talonflame. Only had two, right? Oh, no, it did have three. Yeah, it, it did have three. three. What am I, what am I talking little, about? It had the little... Like one, and yeah, I can make I'm one. crazy. Yeah. I raised that Pokemon. That's one of my favorites. Yeah, I love it because uh, it reminds me of Indra's arrows. A lot of good bird Pokemon. Um, this game introduces the first dog Pokemon that I'm really all about. Growlithe is cool and all, but uh, Rockruff, the rock type dog. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So cool, and I like it a lot more than the uh, French Bichon Poodle. Yeah, knockoff. totally, totally. So. Me too. Than a lot of the dogs. I mean, even Houndoom and Houndour is cool, but what about just a regular old dog? Which, a dog that looks like a dog. Like, that's, that just looks like a regular dog, which, which he does. now done. And it's got, like, rocks, and it's tough, but still, it like, looks like, like a little my spike little dog collar. Buddy. It looks like a little spike collar. It is like a spike collar. So cute. I'm, I'm getting a rock rough. That, that guy's got to evolve, too. I would actually be happy if he didn't. I would be, too, but I feel like he's probably going to, and it'll probably still look really cool. It'll, st- it'll probably be cute and badass. Like, that's dope. I'm looking forward to that. The koala's cool. I love the koala. I love koalas. So. A, lo- a lot of people like this little cutie fly. I'm, I mean, it's cute. but I'm... I think it's adorable. Yeah, and when I adorable. looked at it, I was like, <gasps> I want to put you in a little jar and never use you for battling because I can tell that you're going to be terrible. But I will want to keep you in a jar on a shelf and just take little selfies of you. And then what do you think of, like, Drampa? Did you see Drampa, the, the dragon, the weird, like, the normal old lady dragon. cloud dragon? It's, it's a dragon that's also normal, I think. Yes, it's normal type and dragon type. I missed that. Which I think the normal type is supposed to be resistant to fairy, isn't it? So it's like a defensive measure oh, against fairy. Oh, 
okay. Yeah. It just the way it looks like it looks kind of cool, but it also looks kind of like it reminds a me collectible of a really, vinyl figure to me. It also kind of reminds me of two things. So it reminds me of an Eastern style like Lung Dragon. Okay. But it also kind of reminds me of a of like a hippies like splash paint style 1970s yes, art you're dip, right and it does which look is like actually it, very prevalent in hawaii still so and it looks like it's got a little bit of a beard and dreadlocks yeah uh and it could be surfing it even looks like it says they live ten thousand feet above sea level they i, I thought so they, they are so they're like yeah, those I can little see that that's so they're like those cool. little color burst clouds across the sky that's always in, in like, like yellow submarine art. and stuff yeah yeah because at first i was like it's too simplistic its eyes are just circles they don't even look like they have depth or dimension to them they well they do but not like not like pikachu's eyes are just circles but i see eyes. light shining off of them. yeah like this just looks like a little toy like it's weird but it, yeah now that you're presenting it to me like that perhaps that is what it is hmm. it's a placid pokemon that uh, so it's again, chill. Lens, it's very chill. Yeah. That's its species is placid or its classification. Uh, they love communicating with people in Pokemon. They're especially gentle with children and often appear at schools and parks where children gather. They're usually very gentle. They can fly into a rage if a child that cares for is hurt in some way. Yeah, totally old hippie. Then there's that weird like hooker looking. Uh, <laughs> fish which is really weird i'm just not gonna even nope i Um, saw that i saw that thing i saw its announcement and i literally did the equivalent of swipe (laughs) like Uh, no we'll never date the obligatory electric rodent togedemaru i think it's cute it looks cute it looks a lot like a really fat hedgehoggy type they've never it's funny that they've never made one that lives up to pikachu though they can't like the little i like the little fairy guy he's cute, the only one that came but... even close was the uh was oh. the squirrel and it never evolves the squirrels but no the little fairy guy is pretty close too. and i don't mean a mole guy i mean the other squirrel pachirisu yeah that's what that's who i was thinking of yeah mole goes cool too though now that you mention it i i do like a lot of them but none of them come close to pikachu nothing dethrones the pikachu nothing dethrones the yellow rat nothing then there's the like bandit crocodile thing like it's like a lizard not like a crocodile but like salandit it's like fire poison type and yeah and I love cool little that thing. gecko it crocodile. is the soby lizard of death super cool yeah uh but it just burns recently you and it poisons you it's not enough that they burn you to a crisp they also have to make you violently ill <laughs> that is that is metal it's pretty cool and I like how it looks like it's got like a bandit, like a, at the back of its head, almost oh, totally. like a bandana tied around it. It's cool. Oh, yeah. uh, the legendaries, I think, are both really awesome looking. Sol- Solgaleo and Lunala. The oh, yeah. The sun love- lion and the moon bird pterodactyl thing. Bat. That's bat. how I've been seeing it. Totally. Totally like a bat angel thing. I love it. <laughs> Acid trip. I love it so the much. The grandpa sees the- in his flashbacks. The-, the lion just reminds me straight out of like mega leomon from like digimon yeah and what about the other legendary the tapu coco the like totem looking one i so want to see more of that i love that thing yeah. immediately when i saw it i was like that is badass that looks super hawaiian i'm not crazy about it because that one actually looks like a digimon to me whereas you're saying Sol- solgaleo totally like resembles like, a specific digimon mega it looks leomon. like a, but it looks like a pokemon to me and this looks more like a Digimon than a Pokemon. Not a specific Digimon, but just in It doesn't to me because I can tell that it's supposed to look like a section of a carved totem. Yeah. And this so cool. when I was looking at that, I was just like, that has to do the Transformer thing where one links up to yeah, another. Yeah, that's what they're supposedly going to be stacking up as a totem. Uh, but then just recently, the Koro Koro leaks happened. And two new Pokemon were revealed in the Koro Koro leaks. And then right after that, to counter the leaks, Nintendo revealed not only those two, they did something really smart. Because usually they're like, oh, well, now it leaked. We got to reveal it. So we're on top of things. They were like, oh, yeah? Well, guess what didn't leak? These four other fucking Pokemon were revealing. It was actually like six or something. Other. Nice. They revealed like seven Pokemon at once. They're like, bitches, please. We have the info, not you. So they revealed like this weird little like uh, I don't know fucking wimpy bug. They revealed like a couple like this little berry. It's like a little berry plant. That thing re- is reminiscent of a very delicious and super healthy, beneficial tropical fruit. 
Oh, okay. Um, this is the one that I was specifically talking about when I was like, didn't you already do that Pokemon in gold and silver? It, like, it, it looks like we already saw this Pokemon, like, or a little you bit, know what I mean? a it's little not... bit. Yeah. But I, but this one actually makes sense. It totally, there's a tropical Hawaiian fruit where you don't eat the rind, even though the rind is super full of like massively beneficial antioxidants. You normally take off the rind by cutting it like that, and it has a white flesh inside with a large seed, and you take out the little pods of white flesh. Okay. That literally is reminiscent totally. of something. Totally. I can see that. And it's very cool. I was like, oh, it has to evolve into something. Please. Then there's, there's the lei Pokemon. Which yeah, is that thing. I, like I a Hawaiian lei. I wasn't a fan. I mean, uh, I, I know they had to because Hawaii, but it, it reminds me of like, the Hawaiian equivalent of Klefki. I like the horse, though. Mudsdale. It's like a ground-type horse. I love that. I love Clydesdales. And I was like, they're going to make me a ground trainer in this in this one. Weird that they didn't call it Claysdale. Clay... Clay... No, Mudsdale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and the, the first one they revealed, the robot, like, Miss Lady Gears a lot or whatever. <laughs> totally reminds me of, like, a feminized, like, TikTok. TikTok of Oz? Yeah. Yeah! It totally does look like an Oz character. It absolutely looks like an Oz character. Like, I can see it moving around and, like, making the... <coughs> like, noises. All right, so that's enough of the new Pokemon. Let's jump into some old Generation 3 Pokemon and look at the C. Dot through... Well, it's the, it's, do we need to say the C. Dot through Shiftry family, or can we say C. Dot, Nuzleaf, and Shiftry? C. Dot, Nuzleaf, and Shiftry. Yes, the Shiftry family. Yeah. Number 273, C-Dot. Japanese name, Tanebo. Uh, it is the acorn Pokemon is its classification. Its type, just grass, just the grass type. For now. For now. And then it loses it. No, it doesn't lose it. It does uh, lose it. Its height is 1 foot 8 inches. That's a big motherfucker. That is a big acorn. I did not. I don't picture them that big either. Yeah. Or 0.5 meters for you Englanders. <laughs> Excuse me, for you everybody other than America. <laughs> M- mostly Englanders. We're, we're ignorant Americans, so boo English. Weight, 8.8 pounds or 4.0 kilograms for you Canucks. It's basically just a big acorn. That, that is precisely and exactly what it is. It's got eyes and they, feet. It's like a Goomba from the Mario Brothers. It is not anything like a Goomba from the Mario Brothers. It's a little bit like a Goomba from the Mario Brothers. It is... Nothing. Name a Pokemon that looks more like a Goomba from the Mario Brothers. Shroomish. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, this, it's got a... Normally it's like a dark tan, but the shinies are like a sort of burnt sienna. Uh, He's being artistically fancy now. <laughs> the stem on its head allows it to hang from tree branches. Where and it parasitizes them and leeches them of their nutrients and moisture. Yes, it, it sucks water from the tree. That's how it eats. And once it absorbs enough, though, it becomes heavy and it falls to the ground. So nature put a little... You know, nature uh, 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 f- finds a way. Yeah, yeah, it does. Nature finds a way and they get driven, you know, to the ground where hopefully a few of them, after leeching a tree dry, just crack open and the others feast upon its succulent insides. Why do you hope that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm in a dark place right now. <laughs> Speaking of dark places... Like the forest where these little acorn motherfuckers live, uh, they become glossier the more water that they get, and they're apparently they're pretty proud as they like polish themselves with leaves daily. Yeah, they're very. How do they polish themselves? They don't have arms. They yeah. just like rub up against leaves. I was just thinking that they roll around in in like leafy material that drops off the edge of trees. Yeah, totally. Or like do the sonic spin dash, but never actually go anywhere. Because they're acorns, and so when they do the sonic spin dash, they're just in a circle. <laughs> just them waddling in a circle slowly? Yeah. <laughs> they do have a thing for surprising people, and Pidgeys, like, especially Pidgeys, but any Pokemon, really, according to the Pokedex, they're known to, like, drop down and surprise hikers, as well as just sitting there completely still, and then surprising foraging Pidgeys. So clearly dicks. Yeah, the Pokedex says that, like, if they don't move, they look like a regular acorn. I don't know... What kind of acorns they got in Pokemon land that are one foot eight inches big? Well, they say acorn. I'm thinking the uh, apricorns. I'm thinking the Pokedex was done by little kids that um, 
I'm exaggerate thinking, and I'm, I'm thinking have no frame of reference. I'm just thinking black apricorns. Why? Are those, are those almost two feet long? Yes. Really? No. Their abilities, they either have chlorophyll, which basically harsh sunlight doubles its speed stat, or early bird causes quick awakening from sleep, or its hidden ability pickpocket, in which it steals an item from a Pokemon that uses a attack that, use, that makes contact. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like sticky fingers or pick up. They can be found all across Hoenn, but they show up in most of the forests of other regions. They show up in Eterna Forest, White Forest, Viridian Forest. They show up in the Safari Zone. If you put Ruby version in your DS while you're playing Diamond, Pearl, or Platinum, you can find them in Sinnoh. Because Lotad helps them cross over to the border. <laughs> yes. Yes. Lotad ferries them across the pond to Sinnoh. Burn. Last week, burn. <clears throat> but it really gets interesting once it starts to evolve. Yes, it does. Because speaking of, of darkness and ferrying and, and whatnot... Oh, that's what you were leading into when you said, speaking of a dark place, and I was like, I don't know, like, the, where are these... They live in the dark forest. Oh, yeah. They At evolve. level 14, it grows up into Nuzleaf. And it gains the dark type. Yes, grass dark. Is there another grass dark Pokemon? I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't think there is. Wait, no, there's grass ghost. No, wait, ghost. Cacturn. Oh, okay. Cacturn is grass and dark, which makes no fucking sense, because desert. Uh, Nuzleaf's Japanese name is Konohana, which is really cool. Like we were talking about how sometimes even the names have many layers. Absolutely. Uh, Konoha means leaf, Hana means nose, and Konohana means big nose also. So it's... Yeah, and it becomes from that point on a centralized theme for this Pokemon. Should their nose be grabbed, they lose their strength. Yes, they're a bipedal goblin, little goblin-looking motherfucker. Dark, tan, and beige, sort of the color of wood, really. Or in the case of a shiny, like a darker tan with, like, orange instead of beige. But uh, yeah. they got a long, pointy nose, as you were saying, and a single leaf that comes out of the top of its head. The leaf's longer in males than it is in females. And don't they, like, apparently make some sort of really unnerving disturbing music with that head leaf yes they pull actually pull it out of their head and oh, make God. A, they make a flute out of it they're sick that's cool though isn't it like they make a flute out of the leaf and then they play music through it yeah th that's why it's so dark and unnerving because they self-mutilate to make their <laughs> wondrous music also infrasound have you ever heard of infrasound i i have it's like this frequency that is in almost all like haunted places when they test for it, mm -hmm. which it actually makes you feel uneasy. Like yes. it's and it resonates. It happens in big, empty areas like churches mm -hmm. and with organs. Like it'll resonate in the tubes, and so that they must be controlling infrasound by playing with this flute. And uh, that's one theory. Yeah, they. I, I tend to think that they the, play really disturbing music. Because they're like, I had to rip a piece of my own body off in order to play this. Do you think I'm happy about it? No, I'm not happy. Psychopathic Experience Records my pain. wants to give him a fucking record deal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I can see it. They just rip it off. There's sap oozing out of the top of their skull as they're just playing music in the forest. Some hiker comes over and is just like, dude, did you just rip a piece of your head off? Now that's what I call Lavender Town Syndrome. Yeah, yeah, totally. Make a bunch of kids kill himself. He just starts playing. Do, 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 do. Totally. Do, do, do. Now we know where the background music for that fucking town comes from. They, 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 Lotad just migrated them over and they just stuck there. <laughs> its long nose is a point of weakness. It hates having its nose pinched and it'll totally lose power if you grab onto its nose. They live in densely overgrown forests from which they occasionally venture out to fuck with people and. Even more. Yeah. Now with the thumbs and the bipedalness. Yeah, totally. They they love fucking with people. They're very mischievous. They're mean spirited. Totally, totally. And they bore holes in the trees. That's where they live. They actually live inside of trees. Yeah. So they also like damage the trees. They don't just <laughs> mutilate themselves. They mutilate the forest. Because why not? When you scare everyone, you play really disturbed head music, like literally head music. <laughs> And you got a face like Geppetto built you. Why not? Just, just, just indiscriminately destroy whatever you want. You have the right, right? <laughs> well, they also, 
Even though they're only grass and dark type, they seem to have some type of psychic abilities. Their signature move up until like the last generation was extra sensory, which is a psychic move, and uh, it's damaging and has a 10% chance of making the target flinch. Nothing too special, but it's a psychic move and it's really powerful and it has a lot of PP, I think is what made it special. And that's interesting because it also, it evolves to Shiftry when it's exposed to the Leaf Stone and Shiftry is said to be able to read its opponent's minds and like yep. act accordingly. And counter. And counteract, yeah. yeah. So Shiftry is weird. It's known as the Wicked Pokemon. Four foot three inches tall or 1.3 meters. They mean, they mean Wicked, ironically, by the way. Like Wicked Cool or Wicked <laughs> Badass. Like, yeah, 90s are back. They're Wicked back. Uh, weighs 131.4 pounds to be exact or 59.6 kilograms. It's dark brown like wood again. Its feet are shaped like kind of Japanese sandals. You know, the ones with the mm-hmm. really long like teeth that stick yeah. out of the bottom. Usually there's two. But yeah, he only I has think, one. I think they're called... Um, Tengugeta. Yeah. Is the kind with only one. Tengugeta. Yeah. Uh, because of what they're named after. Yeah. Yeah. The Tengu. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. They've got leaf fans for hands. Yeah. And it, Which, it looks really weird. To but. me, to me, that just seems like the most cruel irony. They had opposable thumbs. <laughs> and then they lost and they, all and they were fingers. Able, and they were able to do things with those hands, like make beautiful music. Born with no arms. And then suddenly they have long arms and opposable thumbs. And, and then all of a sudden their hands get lopped off and replaced with absolutely almost useless, except for destructive potential, <laughs> leaf fans. So they're, yeah, they're, they're just mutilation going on at first they cut off the top of their heads and then they cut off the ends of their hands yeah it's pretty lame and they also have this lame. like yes that's the way to put they've it got this white mane which begins above their uh, really long nose and beneath their eyes and like blows down its back uh and then two long pointed ears that protrude from the white hair almost like eevee ears little bunny ears which actually will make sense with again what they're model after so as you said the the leaf hands they have very destructive potential. It can use them to generate winds with speeds up to 100 feet per second, uh, create really horrible windstorms with these winds, and according to the Pokedex, they can level houses with these fans. Just fuck your house. Yeah, fuck your house, fuck your dog. <laughs> they fuck live, your husband, too. They live on top of trees that are over 1,000 years old, supposedly. One Pokedex entry reads, it is, excuse me, <clears throat> It is said to arrive on chilly, wintry winds. Feared from long ago as the guardian of forests, this Pokemon lives in a deep forest where people do not venture. One of those things where Pokemon's a gray area. This is one of those times where there's an overlap and we don't know where the mythology stops and the real creature ends because Pokemon is a world in which both have been seen to be true. So, And I feel like... Some animals, when their habitats are continually threatened, do get more aggressive, mean-spirited, and some of them run away. So, like, this could be one of the ones that's just like, no, no, I can, I can do fancy jazz hands and fuck up your houses. So this... I'm going to do that whenever I want. I'm actually really curious, okay, because how do you picture, like, do you picture these things as solitary creatures or group creatures? I f- think that they start as a group. That's and, <laughs> exactly and how they... I, like, think. And then they become solitary as they get more powerful. That's kind of how I saw See, the anime shows... And maybe, maybe they might rule over groups of their lesser forms. But I don't yeah, think that the I, ones that are higher evolved are able to live with each other for very long. Especially if they're so wicked and, and so territorial. We, I, we have very parallel thinking with this. I think... Pretty much the same thing. I kind of see it as, yeah, like Sea Dots and uh, Nuzleaf. In the anime, you see them both in their own isolated communities as well in as in mixed ones um which i think would happen and then once they evolve to a shiftry yeah i see them kind of going off on their own but then maybe they become sort of like a detached alpha yeah. to like a f- and even in the anime you see like oddishes working with them too like they're part of the community yeah in one of the anime episodes you actually directly see a shiftry who rules over a colony of sea dots i think it's the same one we're talking about where he C-dots. kidnaps nurse he, where he kidnaps nurse joy uh, maybe oh well there's one where a shiftry kidnaps nurse joy and they go to save Nurse Joy, and there's a bunch of Sea Dots that are fighting back, but then Oddish come and help them too, and there's a bunch of Oddish and Sea Dots fighting, and the Nuzleafs. That might be the one, and, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. 
Uh, and yeah, I see that maybe they're like they they don't sit there. They're not always there. They don't. They're not always involved. But if something's threatening the forest or the the younger nuzleafs, they they might they, you know they poke their heads in every once in a while, see how everybody's doing. Yeah, make sure everyone's okay. Like a, a you need the jazz hands. I got him. <laughs> no, we don't need the jazz hands, Grandpa. I'll get Ludicolo. I'll get that crazy Mexican from down the street. Nobody wants him. He loves jazz hands. That, that, Grandpa, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that idea. That That's crazy that you pretty much said exactly what I was thinking as well. So let's take a look at the influences of this interesting, enigmatic Pokemon. I, I, again, I love how Pokemon managed to have like numerous apparent influences. As we said, acorns, obviously. <laughs> Uh, the fact that it's made of wood, seemingly, and has a long nose, as you kind of alluded to, is reminiscent of Pinocchio. Yeah. But it's actually reminiscent of another thing. Tengu. Yes. Tengu come in, from what I've been able to discover with my own research, Tengu come in three forms. So, Tengu come in crow form, they come in a red-faced humanoid form, and they come in a dog form. Yeah, the, well, the name comes from Chinese dog demons. Yes. And that's not as popular in Japan, though I have seen it, and I've even seen, like, dog bird forms, too. Yes. Sometimes it's a combination of two of the three types. Cross of the yeah. cultures, too. Absolutely. So, and, and what I love about that... Again, though, the Tengu are another yokai, like we yeah. talked about last week with the, ka- the ka- kappa. I called it a kappa last week, but it's a kappa. Uh, and Tengu are another one. And what I love about these guys, the Shifteries, is that they seem to be a real hard sell attempt to fuse all three of the Tengu forms. So you get the fans, you get the fans, you get the long humanoid nose, and then you get dog-like ears. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big chin that looks like the type of... That like you would on the see. humanoid ones. Exactly. So I, they made a real earnest attempt to be all Ooh, inclusive. The fans are almost like wings. Okay. With the cultural form. Some of the uh, Tengu don't fly because of wings, they fly because of those fans. Yes, they're said to carry fans, supposedly, which uh, they can cause really big, powerful windstorms and stuff. But sometimes they had other magical attributes attributed them um, to. The dog forms specifically were known for being able to breathe fire, for instance. Yeah, they're like not consistent like most mythologies, like because the different regions of Japan and exactly. folk tales being passed down and stuff. And there was no Wikipedia, like you couldn't go and make like a Shinto wiki back then <laughs> to like keep track of all the details. But one of the things that is clear, and it's so very clear that it's it's in the name, is that they they had either as a part of their foot or just sandals of those Tengu, I believe, Dama. Oh, about the different forms? No, no. The little one-footed sandals. Oh, uh, Tengu... Tengu... Yeah. Whatever they're called. I don't remember. I knew a minute ago, and now that you're putting me on the spot, I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) Ha! It's all good. But basically, they're they're eastern sandals with one long peg balanced in the center. And they're so known for that. Even though that is a real thing, they have those. The Tengu are so well known for them, it's named after them. And, and Shifri has that as a part of its Absolutely, natural form. Yeah, it's formation. very obviously influenced by Tengu. Uh, it's also very similar to satyrs and wood nymphs of ancient Greek and Roman mythology. They play flutes that uh, inspire feelings of dread in people. They... Uh, fuck around with people they live inside of trees all this reminds me of like wood nymphs and satyrs from yeah. ancient greece except not fairies apparently no they're not fairy type you're right but they can only have two types otherwise they'd also be flying type and psychic type and fairy type <laughs> like yeah. i'm just saying they're really interesting creatures too like they started off as being seen as like very demonic as enemies of buddhism like they always try to discourage people from buddhism and tempters tricksters and shiksters or whatever and this isn't in the same way that like lucifer wants to turn you away from god but like buddhism isn't a religion it's a set of practices like kind of yeah they're a constant distraction basically and uh they're distracting you from bettering yourself yeah basically as time went on they became dumber and dumber, sort of like Homer Simpson in each progressive season of The Simpsons. <laughs> and sometimes they even started saying there's good Tengu and bad Tengu. But what I find interesting was just how dumb they made them. They made them so fucking dumb to the point where it's like they're super strong, super dangerous, 
They love fucking with people. They'll fuck you up. But they're so stupid that it's really easy to get out alive yeah. and distract them. Like you can literally say, look over there, and they will always say where. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> some of my favorite stories demonstrating this, how, how people, some of my favorite ways that people historically have gotten away from Tengu. So take note in case you're ever out hiking the Japanese mountains and run into one. Which I do frequently. Well, now that Pokemon goes out, I mean, how else are you going to find Articuno? <laughs> it's true. So the first one, a young boy is out running around in the fields, playing by himself. He's got a piece of bamboo, and he's using it sort of pretending like it's a telescope. He's looking through it, and he's pretending that it can let him see super, super far distances, uh, like a scrying ball or something. And the Tengu's like, yo, for real? Say word. So the- Exactly like that, because that is how Tengu speak universally. Yes. And the, ludic- the Ludicolo that was with him was like, ay, Dios mío, ay, caramba. And none of them speak that way. <laughs> the Kappa that was with him. Uh, so the Tengu sees it and he's like, yo, dude, let me see that. Let me hold it. I won't steal it. I promise. And the boy's like, hmm. And he's like, look, I'll trade you a cloak of invisibility. And he pulls out a real cloak of invisibility because he's like, this is dope. I want a fucking telescope that can let me see. Fuck it. I can get another cloak of invisibility. And clearly he just and has the, the hook. The boy up was of- like, hey, this FUBU patch is sewn on. <laughs> <laughs> to this cloak of invisibility. <laughs> so he trades him and the boy's like, okay, sure. And he gives him the piece of bamboo and takes the invisibility cloak and just runs around. And that's in- actually the story of how Harry Potter's father got the cloak. Oh, really? I don't know Harry Potter, so I don't get the reference. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Harry Potter has a cloak of invisibility like given to him by his person. dad. Yeah. I'm like the only person I know that doesn't like Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, the boy runs around. He's like Calvin or Dennis the Menace running around creating mischief in this invisible cloak. It's like one of those family circus comics, but without the path. You're like, what happened here? Huh. All right, this next one's great. This old man, right? It's an old old dude. He's got a tumor. He's old. He's suffering. He's like, eh, life sucks. I'm going to go for a hike out in the woods, in the mountains. A nice leisurely dude's hike su- up a mountain. Dude's suffering... He's not suffering, tumors. I'm sorry. He's not suffering, but like it's it's he's no, no. old. Fuck that. He's got tumors. You said tumors. I demand that there are tumors a in this tumor. story. A tumor. You said plural originally, but fine. No, I did not. Whatever. I said he's got a tumor. Fine. Tumor. One. That man has a tumor. He should be in bed being looked after by professionals. Well, he wanted to go for a walk. Don't, I'm, God, God damn it. I'm an old man. God damn it. I'll take a walk whether or not I have diabetes. He needed his meds and like God a really friendly nurse. That's what he needed. Oh, you know what? I can't argue with that. Yeah. So he wanted to take a walk. So he took a nice leisurely walk up a mountain. With a tumor. Let's he, get this straight. He sees a band of Tengu dancing and making merry. And for some reason, joins in their celebration. As we've already established he's apparently a glutton for punishment so (laughs) he's like hey you think you can dance well watch me whip and watch me nay nay (laughs) and they immediately killed him oh shit they're like yo yeah this japanese dude could dance they were they were being sarcastic and they did kill him no they loved it they loved it they were like dude we love your dancing it's so entertaining even if it was because it was awful they were like that was great Yo, you got to come back tomorrow night. And he's like, nah, Game of Thrones is on tomorrow night. I... And they're like, uh, no, we're Tengu. And you totally, we said you're coming back tomorrow night, so you're gonna. And he's like, fuck, I don't want it, guys. Really? Come on. I, I, was just trying... I thought we were having a good time. I thought this was cool. And they were like, word, we'll make sure he comes back. We'll take collateral. So they took his tumor. And they were like, if you ever want to see this again, You'll be back tomorrow night to entertain us with your dancing. So the whole guy uh, was like, okay, I swear I'll be back. Just please don't do anything to it. Oh, boo-hoo. And then he went back to his village and he's like, guys, can you believe this? He's at the bar and he's talking to his neighbor, Larry. And he's like, or Barry. He's like, Barry, can you believe this? It's very important that it was Barry and not Larry. <laughs> it is because we all know that Larry is a jackass. Barry, can you believe this, Barry? Barry's a fucking jackass, too. I don't fucking talk to Barry outside of that goddamn bar. God it's true. Damn it. So he's like, Barry, I was out. I saw these Tengu. They fucking took my tumor. They took my fucking tumor. All I had to do was dance, and they thought they were being slick. Fuck that. I'm never going back there again. I'm fucking happy and healthy now. This is awesome. And Barry's like, that's so cool. I wonder if they can do the same thing with my alcoholism. 
<laughs> so he goes back up there and uh actually it was another tumor he had another tumor and he's like maybe we'll get rid of, rid of my tumor so he goes up he goes out into the mountains finds the tengu dance and he's like hey guys ooh, check it out oh and watch me superman that hoe or whatever uh, and they're like they're like this dude sucks who the uh, fuck are you you're no fucking old man jenkins fucking you know what here you know what take this tumor back too because he never he never came to get it so you can have it and get just get the fuck out of here and you can have this so tumor two so he gave him a tumor and he went back so basically this this poor old man got fucked over into having two tumors is the moral of the story is don't be barry yeah don't ever be barry <laughs> Uh, one last one last story about the Tengu before we uh, wrap it up. A gambler is out in the forest doing God knows what. God damn it, gambler's out in is the forest. gambling with himself, hallucinating <laughs> that he is self as a tree. Well, he's a drinker. He's a, he's not just a gambler. He's a drinker. Yeah, he's a smoker. Exactly. He, he's a midnight, he's a midnight toker. toker. Uh, he jinx. He meets a Tengu while he's out in the forest. And the Tengu's... He thinks you know, it's a Tengu. He's tripping on acid. <laughs> right. It's just a rock. <laughs> it's a kappa. I'm not a Tengu. I'm a kappa. I keep telling you, I'm a kappa. No, you're a Mexican. <laughs> Tell you, we elect Donald Trump emperor. You don't elect the emperor. What are you... <laughs> um, we do now. <laughs> we do in the future. Which is now. Which is now. So the, the, him and the Tengu are making small talk, and the Tengu's like, oh, um, say, just, you know, I'm just making small talk, no big deal, but uh, what's your greatest fear? What are you most afraid of? The Tengu asks the gambler, and the gambler's like, living forever. That Tengu's trying to give me the runaround, right? And he's like, well, what am I most afraid of? And the Tengu's like, yeah, like, you know, like a tangible thing, like, in, that you might run into one day, but it scares you to death. And he's like, gold. Ah. Um, Ter- absolutely terrified of gold. He's like, I ain't gonna let that Tengu give me the runaround. Gold ter- terrifies the shit out of me. Hey, Tengu, what are you most afraid of? And the Tengu is like, oh, pff, gangster rap and death metal. <laughs> I tell you, those kids, not just the black ones, but I, I'm i just saying. This is the Tengu. He's a yeah. racist, too. Because why not? The yeah. other one is a racial stereotype. He's a fucking Tengu. All Tengus are like that. Yeah. Hey, you can hate an entire species of yokai, yokai and not be racist. They're yokai. There's a yokai that like walks up to you and opens its butt cheeks and stares at you with its eye from its butt cheeks. I don't like them. I don't like any of them. I don't like anybody <laughs> that does that to me. That's violating my... It's like that's, My right to not be stared at from an ass eye? Yeah, that's, that's not cool. That's not cool. And you know it. You know what you're doing. Like You're violating my space and my boundaries when you do that. You know what you're doing. Don't try to like. You, you know what you were doing when you picked that form when you incarnated into this being. Or like you know the one that like chases you down and kills you if you say its name. Like what? Why? What? What am I? How am I supposed to refer to you to people? Like that's that dude. So unnecessary. I don't like any of them. I don't like any. Like the entire species of yokai is bound by the gods to do that. Like it's it's not it's not racist to not like a yokai. It's racist. <laughs> He's just so, uh, yeah, the Tengu is like, yeah, I don't like gangster rap and death metal. So uh, the Tengu tries to be a dick and fuck with the gambler by making gold coins rain on him. He's like, make it rain, make it rain, make it rain. That's the sound of me doing the make it rain You got to love how they have just the magical power to do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> make it rain like money. Like, take tumors off people. Yeah. Apparently not well, with surgery. Just like they're yoink. magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're legit. Yeah. They are magic. Yeah, they're, they're magic, but they're like like Buddha magic. They're like able to do whatever they want. Like normally, even magical That's creatures not what Buddha, have some Buddhas sort can't of. Do that. I know. Buddhas that. realize they can't do that. I'm aware of that. I'm. <laughs> That's the point. Like. <laughs> Like, the Buddhist is like, I can't do whatever I want. And the Tengu is like, I can do whatever I want. And it's like, so so above, not so much below. So, you know, Buddha becomes the four pillars of the end of the universe. You know, or five pillars. And the monkey stands on the palm. Tengu just, just makes it rain gold. Yeah, and the gambler's like, oh no, I'm so scared. And then he pulls out his body count record. <laughs> and it's like, motherfucking kill a motherfucking cop. And <laughs> nah, 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 nah. And she starts banging this shit out. And Tengu's like, ah! And he, ah! And he runs away. And then uh, 
And then he, the, oh, and the Tengu like drops his gourd or something, and uh, the gambler's like, oh, sweet, I got a gourd too. Now, of immortality. <laughs> immortality gourd. Maybe. He just didn't drink out of it. He's like, I don't know. He sold it at the market, and he's like, eh, 20 drank bucks. From it. Immortal gourd. Immortal gourd. That's the name of my death metal gangster rap band. It is. You it is. Look it up. Ice Cube, if you're looking to join another gangster rap death metal band. We're open. Uh, just hit us up on our Facebook, please. Sylph Radio Podcast. Just Hashtag, you know, Immortal Gourd. Just, but if you're looking up the Facebook, it's just Sylph Radio Podcast. Sylph Radio Podcast. Three words. Three words, one click of a button, and you've helped us out so much. And a lifetime of fulfillment forever. And if you want to hit us up, you can find us on Twitter at Fairpoint Pod. If you really, really, really want to support us, look up the the youtube channel fairpoint podcast it's on youtube why is it fairpoint podcast and not sylph radio and eh, because i don't do sylph enough when i start doing them more i really want to start doing them more we're just doing everything through the fairpoint that's that's the main podcast we do another show called fairpoint check it out just look at the topic list through the episodes and you'll see an episode you're interested in listening to listen to it that's all you got to do if you like us subscribe on itunes give us a five star rating whatever whatever six star if you can yeah, if you can figure out a way to hack a six-star rating into iTunes, that would be type dope. It'd be wicked. It It'd would be, be wicked, wicked cool. It would. And uh, hit us up on, on one of those social media platforms and let us know, what are you most afraid of? Or least afraid of. No, I want to know what they're most afraid of. Jeremy, I want to know Jeremy, what... Jeremy, I'm, I'm trying to pull a trick on them. Come on, man. Fine. Um, food allergies. What, what's your worst food allergy? And then we'll mail you a box of cookies. We'll just make sure it doesn't have that in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I can edit the laughs out. <laughs> really enjoy yourself. Get into it. <laughs> They'll never hear it. From the secret room, I'm Nathan Kay. And I'm Jeremy Vine. Thank you for listening. 